Hey, what's going on guys? Mr. Chuckles here, and today I've got some more Rift gameplay for you. Today it's going to be on Memento. I'm playing my Stormcaller, using the Exotic Scout Rifle, the Talok, which is the Warlock specific Scout Rifle, and the Theus Infusion Rifle. This is actually my favorite combo so far. I just find that it's the most efficient for my playstyle. Allows me to engage and be uh, proficient at long quarters, mid-range quarters, and close quarters. So, when I play Rift on Memento, the biggest thing that I try and do, you've seen me do this in some of my previous gameplays, is lock down the B area and just control that side of the area. And now I realize that that side of the area is on the opposite side of where the Rifts are actually at. But the biggest thing that I want to try and do as the Slayer in this objective-based game mode is to lock the objective down. Once I do that, my team can then go through and grab it and score. As you can see, we ignited the Rift on our first run. Fantastic job, team. And uh, this guy had a pretty unfortunate spawn. Unfortunately, the spawns are pretty crappy in uh, Rift. And, you know, if the other enemy team grabs it, if I'm sitting down there on that side, I can then go through and stop them. Whereas if I'm sitting on the inside, most of the players aren't going to run straight up the direct route. They're going to try and take a back route, and that's why I play along the B side. I can pretty much see every route other than the one long lane outside. And this also allows me to go through and just keep all of the... Uh, Shotgun users at bay too. I, there's so much cover over here that I can utilize and to run around. So that's a huge advantage as well. And so let's talk about the spawns real quick. I mentioned that they're pretty crappy, which they are. They're uh, extremely difficult to play against when you're losing. If somebody goes through and pushes you into your spawn and constantly is getting the spark over and over, and they start snowballing their advantage through supers and through heavy ammo, it's extremely difficult to come back. Especially when you're playing by yourself, it's like, what can you do against somebody? Everybody on their team has a super, what can you do against that? There's really not much that you can do, unfortunately. And the spawners just keep putting you in the way of danger, so that's really unfortunate. So the biggest thing is just, you know, play safe, and play smart, and constantly out-position the enemy team. And so, as you can see in this game, I actually, I died there a second ago to that shotgun guy. I didn't get the full burst from my fusion rifle, unfortunately, but I managed to get the uh, trade with my melee attack. You'll actually see me, uh, I go 32 and 4 this game, so you'll see me die 4 times. 3 of the 4 times are actually to a shotgun, and the last time I just died to like 1 bullet from an auto rifle, because I'm extremely, extremely low. But I want to talk about these shotguns for a second. You know, every time uh, I die this game to a shotgun, it's because I'm always in an engagement where there's multiple people that are running at me. My goal as a slayer is not to sit back and to pick people off. My goal as a slayer is to go through and to create as much pressure as possible and to get as much attention as possible so my objective runner can go through and make it as far as possible and have like zero people focusing on him. As you can see here, I just completely cleared the entire path of my super. Having my super full all the time for the extra stability and handling on my tau lock is extremely important, but I realize if my team gets there and I can clear them out with my super, that's also important to win in the game, and that's why I utilize my super. There's a time and a place for using your super, and usually I'll tell you guys if you like use it, or if you have your super to use it whenever you can, even if it only gets a few kills. Even if there was only one guy there, or two guys there, I probably would have still used my super just to make sure that my teammate can make it there. But as you can see here, I'm the only one, I'm stuck in their spawn, I have nowhere to go. So I'm kind of put in engagement, I went through and I killed three of the four guys, and I died to the shotgun guy. The only thing that I probably could have done there, is as the last titan was coming around the corner, I should have kept shooting him, and as I did, kept jumping to the left hand side, or scraping to the left and then jump to the left, and I might have had a possibility of killing that shotgun user had I created, uh, or used some vertical space. This guy here, just jumping up, and I managed to pick him off from across the map with my sky rifle. That's where I was saying, you know, Having the versatility in your weapons is extremely helpful, and you're pretty much set for any engagement. So when I'm playing, not only do I control the bottom side area though, down by the spark, I also like to control this top area as well. This top area has a lot, it's very beneficial, you can overlook their rift, you can overlook the spark, and you can overlook the heavy ammo. So you can pretty much prevent any flanks from this area. I find that when you're playing down below in the bottom side of this area, it's a lot more difficult to uh, control things just because you have less uh, sight lines and it's harder to pick people off. You really, you're looking through a super small space in a doorway, and the van happens to be in your way. That's why I try and stick to the uh, top side of the map. So here my guy gets the uh, spark. I'm going to go through and just basically jump up top and get as far as possible. I'm going to melt this guy with my fusion rifle, and I'm going to wait for a second because I am low. But at this point, I know my guy actually has three different dots. So whatever he does from here on out is totally worth it. We've already made a huge impact. I consider three dots a win. If you can get all the way awesome. And again, a shotgun user. I was focused and I was low. He gets me from behind. You know, in regards to shotgun users, I don't hate shotguns in general. I don't mind shotguns if I was to die to them. You know, if I died to something besides a shotgun, 
I go 32 and 4 in this game, like I said, and the majority of my deaths are two shotguns. What is that saying to me? That the literally they can't outdo me with their primary, or I can outplay them just by strafing or outpositioning them. And the only way that they've been able to kill me with their shotgun is when I'm busy taking on multiple people at a time, or when I'm really low. And that tells me that I'm doing really well creating a bunch of pressure too, and that they're constantly trying to kill me and focus on me. Here though, I managed to dodge the Sunbreaker. I dodged three different uh, hammers. And then you notice, as I popped that super, I actually took a step backwards, realizing that I could still chain to him, and that I was going to still be able to live. And I managed to avoid that uh, final fatal blow from his shotgun. But my point in telling you the, the fact that uh, I'm able to survive everything other than their shotguns, a lot of players are so dependent on uh, shotguns, or they use it as a crutch. If you have a shotgun equipped it and you pull it out for the right circumstances, by all means do it. If you have the same amount of kills in your shotgun as you do your primary, that's awesome. But it comes to a point where if you're using your shotgun to be the majority of your kills, no matter how aggressive or how defensive you're playing, and you're constantly dying, then it's not benefiting you a lot. You're actually hindering your performance. A lot of people might say, I've heard this before actually, a quote. If I don't use this weapon, or I don't use this subclass, I'm putting myself at a disadvantage. I have heard that about shotguns, and I've also heard that about Blink. I've heard that about the last one in the Thorn prior to patch 2.0. And I believe that's total crap. Here, I am in a 1v3 situation, and I actually outplay all these guys. I kill the first guy, I'm low. I drop a grenade, I, I keep jumping to avoid all of the headshots. I'm still low, because I get sniped. And I straight back and forth, and I get this guy. Here, I eventually end up dying. I probably should have backpedaled there at the end. But that just goes to show you, no matter what gun you're using, no matter what subclass you're using, if you understand positioning and rotating, that is going to be the biggest thing to help any player improve. People all day could say, you know, I need to use a good, I need to have like a perfect gun to do well. You can have a mediocre gun. You could go into the Crucible using the No Land Beyond, using an auto rifle prior to this patch, and you could have still done well if you understand how to rotate. Using things as a, as a crutch actually puts you at a bigger disadvantage because you're only hindering your performance. You're so reliant on a certain gun. People could say, you know, if you're a good play, you're a good player, you can use any weapon. That doesn't apply to everyone. That's not true. The reason it works for me is because I'm willing to take the time to learn how to use those weapons and how to play against them. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you're all having an awesome day, and I'll see you later.